real estate, land, a house or home, whatever you call it, about two thirds of us have it and a lucky few have even more than one. Regardless of what state you live in, I will put money on the fact that any real property you have should be titled into a living trust to avoid a probate and save your family time, money, and sanity. In a previous video, we talked about what assets should go into your living trust. Now let's talk about how we actually get the big one in there, real property. Firstly, when setting up your living trust, you are always going to sign either a general assignment of your assets to your trust, an assignment for specific assets, or a schedule listing your trust assets. Some attorneys make you do all three. However, for real estate, due to how important land ownership is, these assignments and schedules I just mentioned will not be enough on their own. At most, they evidence your intent to hold specific assets in your trust. How then do we make sure your real property is in trust? By the same method, we do everything else with real property with a deed. When you're signing your trust and the other documents that I mentioned, you should also be executing a deed transferring the property from your trust as an individual to the trustee of your trust, typically yourself, but with a comma trustee behind your name. Yes, if you are the trustee of your own trust, you need to transfer the property to yourself. It's a legal requirement that assets that are to be put in trust need to be delivered to the trustee. That deed will be transferring the property to yourself as trustee of your trust, then be held in said trust. In practice, it's much simpler than that. For example, Jonathan Kent will then grant the property to Jonathan Kent, comma, trustee of the Kent Family Trust. Now let's say Jonathan was married when he acquired the property. Now Jonathan Kent and Martha Kent, as husband and wife, grant the property to Jonathan Kent and Martha Kent, comma, trustees, of the Kent Family Trust. Now that Jonathan and Martha have signed their deed, transferring the property to their family trust, they're done, right? Not quite. Legally speaking, yes, they can stop there, so long as their signatures were notarized correctly and the technical requirements of the deed were met, that transfer deed is effective upon signing and their family home is now in trust. The next step that Kent should take though is to record that transfer deed with the local county recorder to have that transfer of the property to the trust be reflected in the chain of title for the property. That gives the world notice that the property is in trust and who's managing it, Jonathan and Martha as trustees. This is ensuring that there is no question that they intended to hold their property in trust and their son Clark need not step anywhere near the local probate court after mom and dad pass away. Another aspect to know is what kind of deed is used to perform this transfer. Keep in mind, there will be a little variation depending upon the state in which the property is and maybe even the county. However, for the most part, you're going to be using one of three deeds, quick claim, grant, or warranty deed. They're all going to look almost identical, but there will be some subtle wording differences between the three, leading to big differences between them. Now, we won't be covering those differences in depth here, that's a topic for another video, but here's a brief overview. Quick claim deeds only transfer ownership, but they make no claims as to the validity of that ownership or whether or not there are any encumbrances on the property, like a tax lien or a mortgage. Essentially, whatever interest I may have, I am transferring that to you, the recipient. Grant deeds and warranty deeds are very similar and they are preferred methods for transferring property uh, title, whether it be to a trust or to a buyer during a sale. This is one of those state differences though. Generally, one or the other will be the typical or required method for transferring title. Each to some extent makes some guarantees or warranties that the person doing the transferring has valid title and that there are no encumbrances. Here in California, we almost exclusively use grant deeds. One final point I want to make, even if you DIY your trust, something I would stress not to do, you should not DIY your transfer deed. Bad trusts can typically avoid probate at the very least, but bad deeds only ruin everyone's day and perhaps more importantly, their wallets. I have seen too many problems caused by DIY deeds. Property taxes quadrupling, the wrong people getting on title, the wrong people getting off title, 
and not even making it clear who's supposed to be on title in the first place, and the list goes on. Thus, your best bet is to hire an estate planning or at least a real estate attorney to draft the deed correctly and record it in the chain of title. If you are adverse to seeing an attorney for any reason, then your second option is to go to a title company since they will know how to put a deed together. Although, I would always double check their work as I've seen problems arise because someone at the title company only has experience in real estate sales, so trusts were a new concept and almost caused a massive probate for the family after mom and dad died. But that's a story for another day. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to check out some of our other excellent videos here. But don't forget, hit the like button, subscribe, ring the bell, and tell us what you'd like for us to cover down in the comments below.